Because as soon as we take our foot off the gas, as soon as we hit that moment of just zen, competition starts zooming by us, some sort of law or bylaws change, and now all of a sudden we're caught on our heels with everyone running full speed ahead. Just because it's broken doesn't mean that we can't improve it. Just because it's not broken doesn't mean we can't improve it. So to thrive in this future of work, we need to be able to build a culture of experimentation. Culture of experimentation is what happens when we hit that flow state, but we know that we can continue to improve. We know that we can continue to get better. We can use the one degree shifts not to get out of a sticky situation, but maybe even get to new horizons that we never thought possible. Like this company, for example, which non, I'm gonna ask a question, which non-tech stock is up 130 times in the past 12 years? Any guesses? Walmart, no. The answer actually is uh, Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza, <laughs> Domino's Pizza's had quite a run, actually. 2008, 2009, there were $900 million in debt. Like, things were not looking good for Domino's Pizza. They were spending millions of dollars to get people to come buy their pizzas, different marketing campaigns, different ads, and it turns out that it was working. People were coming to buy their pizzas just, just once. I don't know if anyone remembers what Domino's Pizza tasted like in 2008 and 2009, but when they started to survey their customer base, they were getting some pretty unfriendly responses. Not my words, theirs, but sometimes people were saying, is this crust made out of cardboard? Or is this sauce? Is this ketchup? Or is this cheese even a dairy product? And this was like before it was cool to be vegan. So like that was not a compliment, right? Is this cheese even a dairy product? So people were not thrilled about Domino's Pizza and they had to do something fast. So they found out that the root of their friction was actually in their product. So they brought in some chefs from around the country into a test kitchen. And they asked them to make hundreds of one degree shifts in the herbs and the spices and the baking sodas and the yeast and the sauces and the cheeses till finally, after hundreds of small experiments, they managed to have a pizza that people really loved. Now at this point, when they climb themselves out of their debt 18 months later, what do they do? Do they take their foot off the gas or not? No, they actually hammer on that gas. They realize experimentation is what's got us here. It's experimentation that's got us there. By the way, this experimentation was built on the trust that we built not just with our customers, but with our people too. Now that we've got this culture of experimentation, knowing that not every experiment is going to work out well, we can continue to strive for better. We can continue to strive for next. We've all heard it before. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, Domino's heard, if it ain't broke, it doesn't mean we can't improve it. And when they thought about who their competition was, you might think that it's Papa John's, you might think that it's Panago, you might think that it's Pizza Pizza. That's not what they said. They said, our competition is who we were yesterday. Our competition is the mirror. And if we can just be a little bit better than that, over and over and over again, who knows what we'll be able to create. So sure enough, they said, well, why don't we innovate how we order pizzas? Now the pizza tracker is there. Now we know when it's in the oven, when the quality check is happening. I remember on more times than I'd like to admit how many times I'm peering through the curtain waiting for that delivery person to come up and deliver that pizza. It wasn't a broken process, but it didn't mean that they couldn't fix it. Then they said, well, why don't we revolutionize how we deliver pizzas? Look at the little oven in the back. Do we even actually need drivers? Maybe we can try an autonomous vehicle. Then they said, well, heck, why don't we try a drone? Which, by the way, hasn't worked. <laughs> But the point is that they continue to try, they continue to push the envelope, and they continue to experiment to the point where just a few months ago, they said, well, why don't we try tipping you? You're on your way home from work. Why don't you stop by a Domino's Pizza? Maybe you can pick one up for the family. We'll give you a $3 credit to your order. All this to say this culture of experimentation has been working wonders. It's been, Domino's has been performing better than Google's parent company, Alphabet. And I'd say the stock chart, well, the stock chart looks pretty good to me. All this to say, that Harvard Business Review did a study not too long ago that says that when we're allowed to solve meaningful problems, again, anyone in the organization at any seniority level, that our motivation, engagement, productivity goes through the roof. And this doesn't matter whether, we're, whether we have a choice on where we're working or not. And yes, solving meaningful problems and experimenting is important, but I think there's actually something a little bit deeper if we're looking for that root of where the satisfaction and productivity comes from. Is it about experimentation only partly? What it's really about is signaling to your team that say, I trust you to try something a little bit different to make a one degree shift. It's this trust, is this rooted sense of belonging that in a talent market that's tighter than it's ever been before is going to allow us not just to be able to attract top talent, but keep the great talent that we have. And if we can create a place of work that is trusted, that is psychologically safe, what we're going to realize very quickly is that our best recruiters, our best storytellers are the people that love the work that they do.